Hi friends, today I'm just flipping on my camera. I haven't done my hair, I haven't done my makeup, actually I have to wash my hair. So today I would like to show you guys a little project. We're gonna use Heat and Bond. There, there's many different types of Heat and Bond, but the one, this is for stretch fabric, and I use this on leotards and items that are stretchy. Um, you'll see that in some future videos. And the one I'm gonna use is just the regular Heat and Bond. I found a roll. I, and we're gonna be um, cutting out fabric and putting it onto the, it's like an iron-on. So you'll be making this super cool zipper hoodie and let's get started. The items you'll be needing is an old t-shirt with something that's on it that you like. This was a t-shirt I purchased and that was all white and then I filled it in with puffy paint fabric puffy paint, but this is the, the shirt I'm gonna use to cut up and put on the back of the sweater because it's an old t-shirt and I don't really wear it so much anymore. And I like uh, what is here. So then you're also gonna have find a fabric, a big fabric. This is woven material, doesn't have to be stretched. And it, this was a fabric that had a ton of roses on it and I really like the roses. So I cut those out. Um, this is fabric that after you've worn an item so many times and the print, uh, maybe in the day you spilled something on it or it's just an item you don't wear anymore because it's old already and it has like uh, maybe uh, scuff marks on it or something, just wear and tear. And then now you don't wanna give it, give it away because no one's gonna wear it and you don't want to throw it away because you like the patterns on it so what you can do is cut the pattern the object out that you like and then you can put it onto a new article of clothing you'll need your whatever these are called rotary cutters and your heat and bond this is just a regular heat and bond and i bought the roll is pretty good because these are big pieces this is a very cheap uh, sweater that we're gonna, it's a hoodie. You just buy these, you can get them for five, 10, between five and $10. And then what I don't like is after putting on my hair and doing my makeup, and then if I'm cold and I just wanna throw on a sweater, I really love hoodies. And this sweater doesn't have a zipper down it. And what I don't like to do is to put my head through this thing that messes up your hair and then smushes on your makeup. And so we're gonna cut this right down the middle, put a zipper right up the center, and then we're going to garnish it with a bunch of pattern pieces that are just iron-ons. And on the back, we're gonna put a panel of this T-shirt here, and then we'll, we'll work on that and then show you the final results. So here we're just going to outline the roses, use your rotary cutter or a pair of scissors and you're just going to cut around. I have roses here, you could pick any item, there's so many different fabrics with so many different prints on it that are really a delight.
here we're just doing the basic outline with the rotary cutter. And then after you put the heat and bond, you can go in and cut it further with your scissors, make it more precise. You can go in and cut it directly around the flower if you want. Just depends on what you like. So here I have about one, two, three, four, five, six, 10, 11 roses. I'm gonna put these all around on the sweater. So there's two sides on a heat and bond. One side is shiny, and then the other side is like a flat paper, which you're gonna peel off after. So your fabric is gonna go on the shiny side like this, and you're gonna iron that on at medium heat for about 20 seconds until it bonds. Then you'll continue to cut this up. I don't want to get close to the cutout because it'll stick to your ironing board if there's pieces sticking out that are longer than the actual applique that you're making. This first cut, it's not going to be perfect on the edges here. Um, after you bond them together with the iron, you can go ahead in with your scissors and then you're going to cut. And it'll be very close to the connection of what you just ironed on together. So now we're going to iron this and then you're, you're going to do this 10 times or however many times you cut out your other pieces. Keep cutting those out. With, and keep your scraps, all these little things here, these can continue to be used for other items, such as, let's say you want to put little paw prints, you can actually make little ones like this. There's no limit to what you can do with these, with the excess pieces that you cut out. Isn't this pretty, this red rose? I think it's so pretty, the color, like a deep red. It was actually a dress, and then after I washed it, I didn't want to wear the dress anymore. It just had like, it faded from white, it just got a little bit, you could see a little bit darker. And then I just didn't want to wear the dress anymore. So all the little extra pieces that are left over, I just put in a plastic bag for future use. I don't like to throw things away, unless absolutely necessary, like this I could throw away, it's so tiny I'm never going to use it. But the bigger pieces you want to keep because they can be used again for other projects, for little baby clothes or small items that you might want to iron on. It's really fun, especially when one little patch of iron on at the store can be $5. You can make your own at home. Okay, so here's the setup for the zippered hoodie. 
I put the flowers, I still need to iron them down, but I place the flowers where I want them to go and then uh, we'll, we'll deal with the center here, this middle. Uh, and I'll show you how I do that. Okay, with a water soluble marking pencil, I take my ruler straight edge and just draw a straight line. I'm gonna cut this with fabric scissors. Just comes out really sweet like that. From here, the fabric that I cut out my roses in, I'm gonna cut out two strips that I'm gonna sew onto each side to have that effect down the center. So I cut it down the middle. This fruit of the loom, size small. And I already pulled out the string. I don't really use this string, but that got pulled out. Measure out the length of the strips you'll be needing and give it a little extra excess fabric. Um, here we have, I pulled it down a quarter, a half an inch, and then ran it up here. This ends at 22 and a half. So I'm gonna add a half an inch to 23. So I could fold it over and it'll be clean. So we need two 23 inch strips approximately this size. Since I haven't ironed down these yet, I'm gonna do that after the basic part. I'm just gonna pin the roses down where I placed them. My rosary cutter, I will cut now 23 or 20, what did he say? 20, where did he say it? Was it 23 and a half? Oh no, I forget. I'm just gonna cut all the way up until I figure out what it was. fabric at the bottom end, so I need to find another piece in this, piece, in this fabric. Oops. There it is. We've got one piece down. As you see, this is where I cut out a rose. And this is actually the reason why I'm cutting this fabric, because this is what happened in the wash. And it just doesn't look so nice anymore. It's probably the colors bled through to the white and made it like that. But it was really pretty when I first got it. And then I know we have a quarter inch here. Actually, where's the piece I cut before? Let's get the exact. So these strips are a little bit more than, let me see if I can show you. 
another, it's one and a half inches. One and a half inch strips. Two one and a half inch strips, the length of the center of your sweater. So we have our two strips. Then you're gonna take your sports zipper. You need a sports zipper because it's gonna open in the bottom. And there actually ends up, it's longer than what you need. We're gonna have to cut off some of this excess here. And I know the color, I think this was the only color available when I was looking for one of these long ones. It would probably look nice in black. But this pink one will do. It is just a fun um, little project. I'm not really trying to match it specific for this demonstration. You guys can match your fabrics and your pieces. Because this is also like a burgundy and then like this is red. So the colors are a little bit, you know, um, not exact in matching. But it probably will look really cute here with the pink in the middle. We'll think of something. Let's see what we'll do here. But let's get this zipper on and I will show you what needs to be done to do that. Now, because the zipper is too long and we are gonna have to cut in here, there's a stopper. You see that stopper? So we're gonna have to cut where the correct measurement is. And at that point, we're gonna cut across here and then we have to create a stopper such as this. And how we're gonna do that is we're just gonna take the thread and loop it in circles, like, you know, the buttonhole type of stitching. So you're just gonna have to, mm, I'm gonna manually do it. So you just go in circle, circle, circle with the thread until it's thick enough to become like a stopper. So let's measure that out and see where we need to cut it and then We're gonna use black fabric, I mean, black thread right here. Okay, I'm gonna show you how to get the bottom part of the zipper segment going. This is how I'm gonna do it here. You guys can do your zipper the way you want to, but I'm trying to achieve a specific look and I'm just gonna demonstrate exactly the steps I'm gonna do with the strip I have here, what I want to happen is, this is gonna get sewn on here. You could probably iron this at three quarters where it's gonna match the edge here, such as that. And you want enough hanging over the end so you can fold it under. This. Or if you want a clean edge, you Take a longer piece, then you can fold this twice. So you can fold it once, and then fold it twice. So it'll be clean at the bottom, like that. But what we're gonna do there is, and then you sew that at the end, just straight across here. So this is gonna go all the way up, sewn, in there at three quarter, where that when you fold it, it's gonna match the opening of your zipper. Yes? At this point, when this is sewn in, after this is sewn in, we're just gonna go and surge this all the way up. So we're gonna surge that all the way up, okay? And then I'm putting the zipper on top for this one. It's gonna go on top, such as so. And then I'm going to zigzag stitch it with the black thread. And we'll do this on both sides. So your bottom, this will all be surged, so it'll be clean. And then on top, we'll have this sewn in, and this will be zigzagged. So let's see how that's gonna turn out and look. For the zipper, don't do any cutting yet until we get this sewn in and then we'll see what's happening up at the top and we'll work with that. We'll iron the, it's like a bias strip, but we wanna get that three quarters, just wanna iron it there. This will give you a straight line 
to work with when you go to sew it into the sweater. Guys, look, we're going to pin it down to guide us because if we go to the sewing machine without pinning it down, we might be a little bit off when it folds and it won't reach the end as such. So we want to make sure that when it folds, it's going to hit that, the end there like that. So we want to pin this down. And the hard part is it's a little bit stretchy. I picked my threads. I'm going to use black on top and white on the bottom at the bobbin because my serger is set with white thread right now. So the serging that's going to show up on the bottom will be white. And then the black, I know I want a zigzag stitch on top in black, I said with you guys. <laughs> we'll try that. It might look good with white also. So I'm going to go with the black since there are black um, patterns in the fabric. Let's see here. That's better. Right I don't think you guys can see me threading the top part. Shoot. Okay. I don't know how all you YouTube video people are making these amazing videos with great angles set up that you could see everything. Camera placement, holding the camera, where to look. I'll get better at this, you'll see. All right, so I put the bobbin in, and there we go. So I've got black on top, white on the bottom, and then I'm gonna do just a straight stitch. I'm gonna put, um, a 3.0 stitch length and here we go let's see 
I'm going to start with the left side. All the needles are in here. <laughs> I don't want to get poked. I'm getting poked with these needles. I'm going to sew at the top first to get that part going. And you have your guidelines. So let's put the press your foot down. And then I'm racing against storage space. How do you guys have enough storage space? Okay, so let's lock stitch this in. When you first start your stitch, goes first in, here it goes. Fingers back, and back. All right, here we go. It's not a stretch setting, even though these are stretch fabrics, okay guys? And I just made it longer. Here we go. Mm. I have I have heels on. Well, they're like the wedge sandals, so this is very hard to press on the press the foot. I usually have socks on. I'm about to take my shoes off because this is kind of hard to do. Uh oh, I'm losing my line. I can't see it. There it is. <laughs> You guys can see this, okay? I'm taking out my needles. Da, 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 da. Cut your threads. Other side. Ooh. All right, now you're gonna. Oh, see, I didn't, uh oh. <laughs> ah, it didn't reach all the way. You see how there's that little extra left? Whatever. I'm going to surge that and you, it won't be sticking out. So we're going to go in and surge, just, I mean, surge this edge here, perfect, like that. So you'll be cutting out these whatever's extra sitting there. So you have that cleaned line there. And then the zip will go on top. On front. All right, I sewed both sides, and remember I said I was wearing wedges? <laughs> I had these shoes on, and it was so high. So I'm going to serge this, but I can't bring you to the serger because it's so hard to do a setup. Um, I'm just going to take this side after I fold it over and just serge. Serge all the way straight down, right through there. Like that, and I'll show you at the end, okay? So this is what we have so far, but we're not done yet because we still have to do the back. So and we're going to finish that off with the print and then two more iron ones. Let's do it. How cute. This is the shirt I'm deciding to um, cut up, just not using it very much anymore. First goes attitude, then comes style. And this you want to just cut it in a square. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that. I can't get it all in the camera at the moment, but let's see. Get a straight edge. You want to just cut it like just cut in a box. You just want it straight because you're going to sew it on the back. This isn't going to be an iron on because it's such a big piece. But you're just, we're going to sew this on the back. So I just go an inch outside the letters. I'm going to cut. And that's one side. The other side's going. Right above the letters. 
I'm cutting into the whole shirt because I'm not going to really need it after. I'm just going to toss the other pieces after. The shirt's already faded, so I'm not really wearing it. Okay, and then we'll cut at the bottom. Put them on the back of the sweater. We'll put the sweater underneath and you could center it through using the center of the hoodie and then center your square. And I kept both uh, pieces from the t-shirt, the front and back. This was the back of the, sh this was the front of the shirt book. I'm keeping both pieces for thickness and I'm going to go ahead and sew this with a zigzag stitch. Just zigzag it and then zigzag it up. And here, this I painted with paint, with fabric paint, because it was just a plain, um, it was white underneath and I wanted some color. So that's gonna go on the back of the hoodie. I'm gonna start to pin it down. And I'm not gonna be able to show you on the machine right now, because I can't get the camera to be set up at the right angle for you guys to see. Go ahead and pin it. Make sure your sweater's open. And then on the top. Just pin it how it lays. And you're, when you zigzag, you're gonna zigzag that each through the center of the line, and then it'll zigzag in and out, up and down. You can border it if you'd like. I'm not gonna border it. I'm just going through this quickly. And I'll show you that when that's it looks like that when it's all pinned. Okay, so the rigging I have to do to get these cameras, but I think I figured it out. And so maybe you could see the sewing here and I'm gonna sew the back. So I guess if you wanna watch that, it'll be like that. Does that work? Everything is wants to fall down. I have to, there, oh, see it doesn't stay. Okay, whoop, there, can you see? All right, I'll move all this out of there. These clips are amazing, by the way, these little clips. I love these. And I found this at um, Hobby Lobby, and it's a little mount. I think it's a cat, and it's a place, and it's like a suction cup, so you have to wet it or it'll fall down. And for your pins, you just put that thing. It's one of the tools that I am using right now. And I have white thread, and I set my machine to zigzag, just the standard zigzag. Make sure your sweater is open. And I'm going to just sew this in. Let's see, I'm trying to go quickly. Because I don't have much space on, on my storage on my, my recording. Put the, oh my gosh, the center line at the, at the line of your straight line. There. And then I'm going to forward and back stitch that in. Well, and then I'm just going to sew, zigzag sew it. In. You know, it's so, it's a very like urban piece, so I'm not too much concerned about exact straightness, you know. But. Just enjoy the music while this is sewing. You don't have to hear the machine.
already on this part, this is an iron-on patch, but because of the fabric is like double thick, I actually went in, it wasn't ironing down, it was really thick, maybe the heat couldn't get to it, and I went ahead and zigzag stitched that patch in. See that? Okay, only on that one, the other ones are fine. I checked them all already. And uh, once it goes through the wash, it'll uh, tack on stronger. I also went ahead and closed up the weird zipper parts with the zigzag stitch. And I wasn't too concerned about the color of the stitch because this is urban ishy, you know? And um, I just closed it up like that, you know? It looks good, it's fine. It's... And the back is finished. So I got the patch on here like that. Ooh. And I'm not done yet because I still have two more patches I wanna iron on uh, on the back. It's gonna have these two pieces here. So let's see, this is gonna be up here like this. And then the other one will be down here. And then um, that'll be the finished result of this fun recycled. This was actually a closed sweatshirt, remember? Now it's a hoodie, a zipper down, such as so. I added the zipper, like that. And I don't have the strings here. You guys could keep your strings. And I never really wear the hat part here. But there is a flower there like that. And then the back side goes like that. And you get to wear this to dance class. See? The patches, I'm selling patches on ballywhispers.com. Um, all different, they'll be coming out all different. I have right now unicorns and rainbows that are on black fabric, you can paint them and then iron them on. And I'm still gonna go a couple steps further on this because I wanna maybe paint or add rhinestone into the flowers. But let me finish the back and then uh, that this will be a finished project. Yay, <laughs> finally. Okay. All right, guys. So this hoodie is finished. It's complete. And some pointers I'm going to point out. See, I got the two. Uh, you can cut in further in around these edges here so that it won't have the white outline or whatever you're um, cutting out to get closer, like I did on this um, flower. I cut closer to make it more uh, detailed. I mean, I kind of rushed through this just because I want to show you guys how to make it. But if I were to make it again, I would go closer in. I would get rid of the white here. And this is the end of this sweater project, although I am going to go a step further and um, I think I want to add like glitter or paint. I want to get some sparkles in here. So I'm going to paint in there and the back is done. So imagine what you can make with what you guys, what materials you have in your house laying around with the iron-on patches. It's so cute. Can I get on a chair? Can I see that? Such a cute jacket. So, yeah, I would go ahead and cut the white out because it's a little bit flashy to the eyes. You see that? And if you have any questions, just write it in the comment box. Imagine the colors that you could pick. You can have a white sweater with whatever fabric you have around your house, laying around a, a pattern that you might really love but you can't wear it anymore because of something. For example, this the red was bleeding and I just can't wear it anymore, it's a beautiful skirt. Then I love the roses, so I was able to make this sweater with that. And then any old t-shirt with a pattern or saying that you might like and you don't wear the shirt anymore. It's another use for some of the stuff you have for an upcycle and a wonderful, fun, project. Hope you try it. And if you do, let me know how it works out for you. And um, watch us on our next videos and what's coming up. We have all these fun little projects. These are angels that I'm also selling uh, for iron-ons, little angels. These are going to be in the store, Ballet Whispers. And see you guys soon. Thanks. Thanks for watching.
see you.